Welcome to HDTV. You now rocking with your boy. Now, I was reading this new article in the New York Times talking about the large DNA study traces violent history of American slavery. And basically, um, it goes like this is by Christine Canelli, whatever. Um, more than one and a half centuries after the transatlantic slave trade ended, a new study shows how the brutal treatment of enslaved people has shaped the DNA of their descendants. The report, which included more than 50,000 people, 30,000 of them with African ancestry, agrees with the historical record about where people were taken from in Africa and where they were enslaved in the Americas. But it also found some surprises. For example, the DNA of participants from the United States showed a significant amount of Nigerian ancestry, far more than expected based on the historical records of ships carrying enslaved people directly to the United States from Nigeria. At first, historians working with the researchers couldn't believe the amount of Nigerian ancestry in the U.S., says Stephen Mc Micheletti, a, popu a population geneticist at 23andMe who led the study. After consulting another historian, the researchers learned that enslaved people were sent from Nigeria to the British Caribbean and then were further traded into the United States, which could explain the genetic findings, he said. The study illuminates one of the darkest chapters of world history in which 12.5 million people were forcibly taken from their homelands in ten of thousand, tens of thousands of European ships. It also shows that the historical and genetic records together tell a more layered and intimate story than either could alone. The study, which was published on Thursday in the American Journal of Human Genetics, represents real progress in how we think that genetics contributes to telling a story about the past, said Alondra Nelson, a professor of social science at the Institute for Advanced Study in Princeton, New Jersey, who was not involved in the study. Although the work is commendable for making use of both historical and genetic data, Dr. Nelson said it was also a missed opportunity to take the full step and really collaborate with historians. The history of the different ethnic groups in Africa, for example, and how they related to the modern and historical geographic boundaries could have been explored in greater depth, she said. The study began as a dream project of Jonah Mountain, senior director of research at 23andMe, even before the company had any customers. Over 10 years, she and her team built the genetic database. Primarily, the participants were 23andMe customers whose grandparents were born in one of the geographic regions of transatlantic slavery. All participants consented to have their DNA used in the research. In the new study, Dr. Micheletti's teams compared this genetic database with the historical one, Slave Voyages which contains an enormous amount of information about slavery, such as ports of embarkation, I mean, excuse me, of embarkation and disembarkation and numbers of enslaved men, women, and children. The researchers also consulted with some historians to identify gaps in their data. Dr. Mountain said historians told them, for example, that they needed representation from critical regions like Angola and the Democratic Republics of Congo. The team worked with academics connected to West African institutions to find that data. The size of the project data set is extraordinary, said David Reich, a professor of genetics at Harvard who was not part of the project. Because it drew participants from a direct-to-consumer database of millions of people, the study was able to ask and answer questions about the past and about how people are related to each other. That cannot be asked by academics like himself, he said. At best, academic projects are able to study hundreds or a few thousand people, and generally that data does not include the genealogical information that the 23andMe research participants provided. The findings show remarkable alignment with the historical record. Historians have estimated, for example, that 5.7 million people were taken from West Central Africa to the Americas, 
and the genetic record shows a very strong connection between people in West Central Africa and all people with African ancestry in the Americas. Historians have also noted that the people who were taken to Latin America from Africa disembarked from West Central Africa, but many were taken originally from other regions like Senegambia and the Bight of Benin. And the new genetic evidence support this, showing that the descendants of enslaved people in Latin America generally carry genetic connections with two or three of these regions in Africa. <sighs> Excuse me. Historical evidence shows that enslaved people in the United States and the British Caribbean, by contrast, were taken from a larger number of regions of Africa. Their descendants today show a genetic connection to people in six regions in Africa. The study found the historical record shows that of the 10.7 million enslaved people who disembarked in the Americas after nearly 2 million others died on the journey, about 60 percent were men. But the genetic record shows that it was mostly enslaved women who contribute to the present day gene pool. The asymmetric and the experience of enslaved men and women and indeed many groups of men and women in centuries past is well understood. Enslaved men often died before they had a chance to have children. Enslaved women were often raped and forced to have children. The 23andMe project found this general pattern, but also uncovered a startling difference in the experience of men and women between regions in the Americas. The scientists calculated that enslaved women in the United States contributed 1.5 times more to the modern day gene pool of people of African descent than enslaved men. In the Latin Caribbean, they contributed 13 times more. In Northern South America, they contributed 17 times more. What's more, in the United States, European men contributed three times more to the modern day gene pool of people of African descent than European women did. In the British Caribbean, they contributed 25 times more. This genetic evidence, the scientists say, may be explained by local practices in the United States. Segregation between enslaved people and the European population may have made it more likely that the child of an enslaved mother would have an enslaved father. But in other regions where enslaved men were less likely to reproduce, dangerous practices like rice farming in which harsh conditions and muddy fields made it easier to drown and malaria was common may have killed many of them before they could have children. In some regions in Latin America, the government enacted programs that brought men from Europe to father children with enslaved women in order to intentionally diminish the African gene pool. The study il illustrates how much physical and sexual violence were part of slavery and how they are still built into our society, Dr. Nelson said. It confirms the mistreatment, discrimination, sexual abuse, and violence that has persisted for generations. She said and that many people are protesting today. Um, Sorry for that long. I know people probably going to turn the video off before I get to the end because they're bored. But basically, they're telling us something that we've been known. See, this is the thing I have with the pink folk. You guys act like all of this is new. This has been going on for years. And now all of a sudden... Everyone wants to be all enlightened now. Like, man, black people are having it hard. Man, that's messed up what happened to George Floyd. They've been doing that to a million George Floyds before we all were born. So I'm I'm tired of this crap with, oh, we, we finally realized that this, yeah, of course. Of course, the slave owners was raping the women and they were forcibly sleeping with the women. Of course. You see, this is the thing about this society I've noticed. You, you, you took our music. You made it yours. You took our ideas and made it yours. And for all the people out there saying, it's not your, it's yours. No, I'm saying yours. <laughs> I'm saying yours. You, you did everything to castrate us as a people. And then you sit there and wonder why we fight, why we riot, why we do these things, why we complain. 
you guys owe us over a hundred some trillion in reparations that we know we're never going to see. That's why you guys are doing all this law changing and trying to, oh, be all nice a little bit to everybody. You're trying to give us this stimulus check to shut us up, but you're not going to shut me up. I don't care how many people view this. I don't care if anybody, I don't care about views. I do this because I love it, because I love to speak. I love to talk. I love to interact with the truth and express the truth. Jews are also not exonerated. To me, they're not even the real Jews. The Jews are the Hebrew Israelites. You took that from us. You took the land from us. You killed off all of us and then threw us in slavery. You killed our strongest men and women. And then you put us who were followers to follow your abetting. Then you made all these mixed kids so then you could confuse them into making them believe, oh, well, you can't sit at our table, but we can let you in the house. You can have clothes. You could take baths. You're not going to be with those dark skinned folk. We're just going to leave them in the field to die. That's what you guys have done. And you think psychologically we supposed to just change. We're psychologically supposed to just conform. Who the hell are you? You guys are nothing but oppressors. You're oppressors. You're colonizers. You're all of it. Then when you made Black Panther, you guys were surprised that Black Panther outsold all your other movies. I wasn't because you know why? The black dollar, if you don't have it, you ain't it. Let me say that again. If you don't have the black dollar, you ain't it. I'm not an activist. I don't even want to be one. I just fight for what's right and what's wrong. And what's wrong is you've oppressed us for over 400 some years. You guys keep running these studies acting like it's brand new. This isn't brand new. This it has been going on for decades, for centuries, millennia. And you guys just walk around here like everything is OK. Y'all y'all walk around your house that's worth a million dollars just like, oh, well. Well, we're going to make this new rule at work. You got to wear all vests. You got to wear all shirts that are the same. Just putting us in a systematic slavery, but you don't call it slavery. You just say that, oh, you got a job, which means slavery because you're working for less than what you're earning. Every, every, every level you move up in any business or any company you're in, you're making 20 times more off of us than what we're actually making for that company. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Working folk and people out there. You see, you guys are so busy wanting to be the next Instagram model or be the biggest rapper and all. It's bigger than that. We need more people who are lawyers, who are doctors, who want to make change. We need more police officers to help these police officers understand that every brother and sister in the hood is not bad. There are some hoods that are very prestigious, that are very nice, where you can go into, nothing gonna happen. But see, that's what we've been planted with. Seeds, seeds have been planted in us. They throw guns in the hood. They throw drugs in the hood. They throw liquor in the hood. Every corner is a liquor store. This stuff isn't made up. So all of your stuff that you're writing, making these puff pieces, acting all surprised that, oh, a lot of Africans came from Nigeria and came from, we know this. What are you going to do about change? Bill Clinton said it. A president, Bill Clinton said it. Racism is our problem. Talking about you pink folk. Talking about you pink folk because of the OJ Simpson case and because of the Furman tapes who nobody's talking about. And shout out to Carcino for life for 
putting that out on his Patreon, talking about the Furman tapes. He exposed everything about this corrupt system. And this system continues to be corrupted because nobody wants to tell the truth. The elephant is in the room. And for those who may see this and may not, I don't care. All I care about is when is it going to be enough? No more, no more of this protesting for this, no more of this wanting the, the flag change and a, a flag never called me the N-word. A statue never called me the N-word. That pink dude called me the N-word. That pink woman called me the N-word. They look at us as N-words. All we are is entertainment to them. If we're not singing or dancing or playing football or basketball, shooting a ball through a hoop or running somebody over, we ain't it to them. But let us be a, 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 a physician or, or be a national, whatever you call it, <laughs> a physicist. Or we could be a, a, a heart surgeon or a paleontologist or anything. They will look at that as, Oh, he's boring or she's boring. Uh, we can't talk about that, but let's go talk about this guy, Trippy Red over here. Let's go talk about this guy over here, um, Blue Smoke or Blue Crab or whatever the hell rapper they got now. That's what they want. And the problem is we need to grow up. We need to stop being brainwashed. The Deshaun Jackson thing has opened a lot of people's eyes because of the way they treated him and tried to they forced him to apologize but nobody is still answering that the owner is making a movie about adolf hitler the owner jeffrey lurie is making a movie on adolf hitler showing his showing him growing up they're making it about them oh their pain is so hard even though i don't condone what happened to them and it's sad but y'all only went through 20 years of that we're still going through that and 400 some years added to it. And you guys got paid your money. Y'all got your money. Y'all got paid billions of dollars of reparations. We ain't get paid nothing. <laughs> but, oh, but, but we're wrong when we speak about our pain and show that you guys also had a hand in slavery. Y'all also were trading the slaves. Come on, man. Stop this hypocrisy. It, I done went way too long ranting and everything. Look, like, click, subscribe, share this, please. And again, um, welcome to HDTV, man. Thank you. And um, I appreciate you if you stayed for a while. If you did, thank you. If you didn't, man, hey, I hope to make a video that you'll stay and enjoy. Live boy.